Mike here. So I got the little mini fridge uh, going. Uh, it's not running right now, but uh, it's just in uh, off cycle. Uh, I wanted to make the video just to talk about purging a system uh, after you do some work on it. Um, not purging per se, uh, pressure testing a system. Pressure testing is very important and you should do it uh, every time that, uh, that you do any work on the refrigerant lines before you vacuum it down. I skip the pressure test a lot because I go through a lot of different iterations of the machine change things around quite a bit. And I might break a flare, put something else in, tighten it up, vacuum it down. I don't get too concerned about my vacuums. I just get, uh, uh, run it for a few minutes and uh, make sure that it holds for a few minutes. And then I go ahead and start to pressurize. At times, I might get a little propane leak. I can hear it, I can bubble test, put, put some soap bubbles on there. And um, usually, you know, tighten down a flare. Rarely, extremely rarely do I ever have any braze joints that leak. Uh, those I'm usually pretty good about. Um, however, a few days ago, I had a very, very unfortunate uh, series of events. Um, what I did was, uh, in my propylene glycol tank down here, I decided I wanted to add a couple of more feet of evaporator coil tubing and also an accumulator tank. So I did all this on a rainy evening. Um, I cleaned out the shop a little bit last week. It's a little messy right now, but uh, I can get in here. I can close the door, turn the heater on, and it's nice and comfortable. So I decided to do this on a weekday evening, and really it required more time. I should have spent, uh, waited for a Saturday to do it, but I did it anyway. I kind of rushed it, and uh, I made one of these little, these little pinch tanks that I make so often. I don't even have a good example. Oh, here's, here's leftovers of one right there, where I take a piece of uh, pipe and kneel it and then smash the end around a piece of tubing. Well, I did that with a piece of three quarter inch pipe. And uh, uh, the tank and everything was gonna work out just fine. I jammed everything in there. Um, I dumped all my glycol solution back in. It's actually a little bit stronger than before. I can talk about that sometime later. Um, so that we had that liquid level up. And then uh, after I put everything together, I threw the vacuum pump on it and turned it on and started tidying up everything else. Um, insulation and you know thermocouples and whatnot. Well, while I was in here working with some of this, uh, these thermocouples and remounting everything, I could hear some, some sucking noise, some hissing. I thought right away it was one of my flares here because I broke these flares. Checked those and they were pretty tight. Thought well, I could have a bad flare. And then I said, well, I'm gonna throw a little bit of pressure in it. Just throw a little propane in it, see where that noise is coming from. If I suck a little air into it, it's not really a big deal. Um, I just fix the leak and then continue to vacuum it down. Well, <laughs> right away when I put some pressure in, it started to spray out of my accumulator tank underneath the liquid level. Um, sprayed this fine mist of propane and antifreeze, propylene glycol, so it's relatively non-toxic, but uh, uh, not a good thing to get in the eyes. So I relieved all the pressure, walked away for a few minutes, and then when I came back, I took everything apart, I pulled the tank out, uh, pulled the, the, the evaporator and everything out, and what I found out was whenever I pinched it here, and I've seen this happen before, um, the, uh, the one in there actually has a, a <clears throat> the inlet uh, goes into the bottom and then the outlet comes out of the top uh, on the opposite end. And um, so whenever I pinched it in the vise, the vise is pretty sharp jaws here on the corner, it tore the copper just a little bit there in the corner and that's where it was leaking. So I'd never brazed that because I didn't look closely enough to realize there was a hole there and I never pressure tested it to see if I had any issues. So what I very quickly realized was, oh shit, I just sucked a bunch of antifreeze into my system. How much, I didn't know, but the vacuum pump had been running for a while, um, and no doubt there was some in there. So the best thing I could do was, at the time, was just to fix the leak, uh, put everything back in. I pressure tested it this time, um, <clears throat> and then evacuated it down, and uh, was getting a lot of really milky looking oil there in the sight glass. Um, so I changed out the compressor oil probably three times uh, until it got relatively clear, stayed clear, pulled a good vacuum down and uh, tried to charge it. So I charged it up and uh, 
real quickly it kicked the breaker um, that's just GFI and the compressor was drawing high amps every time that I would start the compressor it would make a sloshing noise in there like a like a washing machine or something not good not good at all so uh, I tried this a couple of times hey compressor just kicked on time to time to cool um, did this a couple of times and the next day it held a good good vacuum over the day pretty confident I'd removed most, most of the water, but the question was the propylene glycol. So I did a little research and uh, propylene glycol has a really low vapor pressure. I would have to pull in a ridiculously low vacuum uh, or raise the temperature of the, uh, the whole system up pretty high to get that stuff to come out as a vapor. So I said, well, I'm gonna change the oil in the compressor. Um, funny thing is I'm really abusive to compressors this compressor came out of a refrigerator and I never changed the oil in it not once I've never checked the oil I've never dumped any of it out nothing I just run it until it dies I've never killed a compressor yet so uh, just keep beating the shit out of it. it's my, my motto so uh, unhooked all the lines and the wires and everything and as I brought it over here to dump it into a pan before I even got it there this green liquid started to pour out of it <laughs> So I started laughing because uh, <laughs> it's so stupid and I dumped it all out and I mean there must have been a couple of there might have been a, a cup or two of, uh, of water and antifreeze well or at least just antifreeze in there probably most of the water was gone um, it was a pretty green murky substance with the compressor oil so I drained it all out um, went over here to this side popped the uh, filter out and dumped it out there was liquid in there um, I ended up blowing out the capillary tube uh, <laughs> oh and I also unhooked the lines to the my evaporator and uh, I blew that out again <laughs> and there was uh, plenty of liquid in there hell I should have done that whenever I went to repair it when I fixed it I should have turned it upside down <laughs> but I was in such a hurry uh, very silly so I'm, I'm making this video uh, because that's the uh, that's the events that happened and I wanted to um, to express that, and you know, so nobody else does that. It's very important, very important that you pressure test. Um, so knowing that uh, I dumped most of that stuff out, I knew there's still going to be some contamination in there. There's still always going to be some contamination. I put some, um, I put about six ounces of uh, mineral oil in there, refrigeration compressor mineral oil, and. Um, uh, put the whole machine back together and started it up. Everything was running fine until uh, the suction line got down to a pretty low temperature. And because we have a capillary tube wrapped around the suction line as a heat interchanger, um, it uh, I noticed all of a sudden uh, compressor amps dropped and the low side pressure dropped and damn near, you know, right into a vacuum. So I was plugged up, my capillary tube plugged up and or just my filter plugged up. Um, but I think it was the capillary tube. I think there was some liquid, some water or something still in there that plugged up the capillary tube. So, uh, you know, I shut the thing down. I heated that line up a little bit and did various things. And I had the machine apart probably two times, um, blowing out the filter, blowing out the cap tube, blowing out the evaporator every time getting a little bit out. Um, I also changed the compressor oil again, put it in a clear cup and uh, noticed a couple of globules of, of foreign liquid in the bottom of it, I presume being propylene glycol. So um, on this last time, I, uh, I put the compressor and along with the filter under a vacuum for an extended period of time, heating it up with the heat gun to try to drive off more um, and change the oil again in it and put the machine back together. It's been running fine ever since. Um, we are a little, a little dry um, on our... Uh, on our suction side there. Um, I'm actually out of propane right now. I need to go get propane this afternoon uh, so we can get this uh, superheat level down more quickly. Yeah, but overall, I'm, uh, just from what I'm seeing with the uh, performance of it, the, uh, the accumulator um, has, has definitely helped matters a little bit, changed the characteristics of the system a little bit. So uh, I'm gonna continue on with that. Um, once I get some propane, I'm gonna charge some more in it. Pretty much let it run a couple of days like that. I have some, some plans for that. But for today, I've got some wood here, some ash, and uh, so this, I don't even know what this was. A guy gave it to me. I'm not sure what it is, if it's maybe beach or something. Um, anyway, the point is, I wanna make some, uh, some metal spinning tools. So I got some tool steel here, and uh, this is gonna be my tool rest. So I'm going to drill some holes in that, some pins for it, and mount it all on my lathe here, and um, 
yeah, so, you know, I don't know how far I'm going to get on that today, but I'm going to give it a shot. So, um, anyway, that's, uh, that's all I want to say. Just make sure that you pressure test. I mean, hell, you can pressure test with your refrigerant if it's a hydrocarbon. Um, you can't get to a very high pressure, uh, preferably get some nitrogen, it's cheap. And that's what's really stupid about it, is nitrogen's cheap, and I don't, I don't do it nearly often enough, but my tank has been getting really low lately, so I only use it when I really need it. Um, and in this case, I really needed it, so um, don't do what I did. And most of you aren't going to have a problem like that uh, because you're probably not going to have uh, you know a submerged joint like like I had there with that accumulator. Um, so it only compounded the issue dramatically. <laughs> so uh, thanks for watching.